Hey, Chicago, what do you say? It's the CHGO Cubs podcast. Luke Stuckmeyer, Cody Del Mendo, and what is the off-season plan for your Chicago Cubs? Ryan Herrera will join us uh, later on in the show. He's been at Wrigley Field all morning listening to Jed Hoyer, Cubs president of baseball operations, laying out uh, what he thinks went wrong down the stretch, what he thinks went well. For the Cubs this season, what went wrong during the season and at the end, and also sort of answering some questions uh, that a lot of Cubs fans have and even laying out a bit of a game plan, if you will, for the offseason. We'll talk about all of it. We're going to hear some of those sound bites and and watch some of the video that Ryan got uh, from Wrigley Field earlier today. Um, I, hit the like button, folks. Hit the like button hit on the, the like way button. in. We see a lot of people in the chat already. Hello to everybody. Make sure you subscribe to the CHGO Sports YouTube page. Best way not to miss anything that's going on. I, I love that we still have Joe Madden giving us the thumbs up. Yeah. On YouTube. Cody, the first thing I heard, uh, we're going to talk about five key sound bites, all right? One, okay. he was at, uh, Jed Hoyer talked about whether or not it's a, a successful season. Two, What's going on with David Ross? I know the chat's going to be big on that one. Uh, Three, Kyle Hendricks' future with the team. Four, how much will they spend this offseason? Might it take them in the uh, luxury tax threshold? And five, Cody Bellinger. What's his future as a free agent? Will the Cubs be bringing him back? But the first thing that that he mentioned that really caught my ear was Jed Hoyer saying the shell of a good team is there. Now we just need to add to it. Okay. He's right. He's, he, that is correct. That's correct. There are, there are pieces. Maybe the shell is there. Maybe it's not fully formed, but you can see how they're building towards the future. But clearly uh, a shell doesn't make a complete picture. So we gotta, yeah. you got to fill in the edges of the puzzle now. Yeah. No, I... I like I like to hear that. Um, you know, I try not to take everything that these season-ending pressers. I don't try. I try not to take everything to heart because at the end of the day, like they're never going to talk about who they're thinking yeah. about adding or any of that because that can they can get fined for that for tampering and all that stuff. But you know, I I will say he started off the the presser in a way that I liked. I mean, he he even said that it wasn't a successful season to start, to, literally to start it. So, you um, want to hear it? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's let's play the uh, Jed Hoyer right off the top of the press conference. How he looks at this season for the Chicago Cubs. I know you guys have asked our you know, players, you know, Rossi, Tom, you know, is this a success or not? And I guess I'll start by saying you no. Know, um, you know, when I think about our season, I'm really impressed that our guys set goals as high as they did. Um, sort of externally, we were not expected to be a playoff team, but the internal uh, expectations were that we we're going to make the playoffs. And you know, going back to spring training, that was that was the clear goal. Um, when we were 10 games under in the middle of June, um, these guys still believed, and it was pretty amazing thing from my seat to listen to them talk about how good they thought the team was when we were 10 games under um you know in the middle of july when we were after the all-star break we were still we were seven games under and these guys are begging me not to break the team up and begging me not to make trades which is really impressive um these guys believe through all that and you know they went on a heck of a run i think we went from you know 10 under to 12 over over a three-month period and um it was fun to watch we just didn't finish the race uh painfully we did not finish the race and um you know, certainly there's positives to take from the season, both organizationally, um, and certainly positives to take from, as a major league team. But um, 
you know, right now we're sort of s stuck thinking about you know what could have been and thinking about the, you know, the painful last two and a half three weeks and um, you can't call something that um, falls short of your goals a success so ultimately we have to live with that um, I know it'll motivate me all winter and I know talking to our players and coaches and front office I, I know it's gonna motivate them but um, you can't you can't define something as as a success when you fall short I think as Tom said those those things are consolation prizes, and that's not why we're here. So, All right, like to hear that from the top, from Tom Ricketts, now to Jed Hoyer, and we've heard it from the players too. Everybody's saying, okay, let's not, uh, let's not consider this a win. Yeah. There was progress this year, but when you play the way you did the last three weeks of the season, not good enough. And, and I'm glad that it stings for the general manager too. Yeah, I mean, when he... What, is he, what did he say? It painfully? Painfully, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. It was, it was, did you see it was this the guy? Did you see Cody the, the last three weeks? It was like weeks? the first time I felt like me and Jed Hoyer had something <laughs> truly in common. <laughs> that was literally the first yeah. time I ever felt like me and this rich-ass dude who helps manage the uh, Cubs roster, me and him, we had some in common. We bonded. Painful. We, we bonded. I bonded with him in, that, in those 10 seconds. Uh, credit to him. Uh yeah, no, it's, again, it's a great start to the presser, and I, you know, actions speak louder than words, but I'm, I'm sticking to my guns, like I said yesterday and like I said in the show before. <laughs> like, this is, this is, this is a, def, a career-defining offseason for Jed Hoyer. You know, last offseason it was more about, okay, Jed, can you make, can you, can you, can you make the big move? Can you get a shortstop? Can you get a shortstop? Can you get one of them, Jed? All right. And now this offseason is, can you make this team a real contender? Not, don't make me have to talk myself into it after I have a couple beers in my apartment before I come and we do the season preview show, all right? Make this team a convincing contender. Can you do it, Jed? That's the big question going this offseason for me. And, uh, yeah. So... Illini McGee in the live chat says, I like Jed. I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. This is a huge offseason for him, in my opinion. Show us you can build this team. Just what Cody said. You know, and it's funny because you mentioned last year and we said, oh, he's got to go get one of the shortstops. They were dangerously close not to getting one. It came down to like, can you get, can you get Dansby? Yeah. And he wasn't even sure if it was going to happen. So bottom line is he got his guy. I think he got him at a reasonable deal. And... Overall, season one with that player was good. Uh, Chris with a super chat, 199, saying, when my birthday comes, <laughs> I'm wishing for Otani. I've been wishing for Otani yeah. since, since opening day of last season. <laughs> you know what I was wishing for was a Powerball hit last night, but it did not happen. Yeah. No Powerball I, winner, I, but I, it rolled I was, over. I was pleased to see that you arrived to work yesterday. So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> Still a chance. Another drawing on Wednesday. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I like that. Ryan is going to join us. Is he ready to join us now? He wants to. Ryan's texting uh, Ryan's, me literally being like, I'm ready. <laughs> Ryan's been texting you. Yeah. He's ready. I thought I heard the noise earlier. Here. Okay, there he, there is. he is. Ryan Herrera from beautiful historic. Ridley he was sitting Field. front row at Hello. the Cubs press. Front row. Yeah. Front row. Uh, Ryan, what did you think of the opening comments from David Ross about, uh, or from uh, Jed Hoyer about whether or not it was a successful season? Uh, did you believe I mean, I him? Think it was, yeah. I mean, I, well, yeah, I here's the thing: is we came into the season like we had our expectations, right? We said, I think, I think my quote was like, "500 team can deviate five or so wins either which way," which happened. Um, and we kind of all said, like, if things really go right, this team could, you know, get themselves in the playoffs, and and they almost did. And um, but we all knew that they had their own internal you know, numbers, internal expectations and stuff like that. So whatever Vegas said wasn't what they had internally. And so I I think, you know, and it was always funny when people like earlier in the season were like, uh, Jed and the front office, they never, they never wanted to compete this year, all that kind of stuff, which is like, no, that they, they did. And um, they were hopeful for a playoff appearance, obviously. And um, as we've talked with the players, with Ross, with Tom Ricketts, and obviously Jed today, like, the end of that season stings because they were right there. And if their goals were to make the playoffs, um, 
they didn't meet their goals, right? And this is what we talked about yesterday on the show. Like you can't, yeah, you can't call it a, a, a good season or a success um, if you're not reaching the goals that you set out in spring training on opening day and all that stuff. So, um, as I heard you guys saying, like it's kind of words at this point, like right? Like it's what are you gonna do to make next season a successful season in your eyes? Um, so that's on Jed, that's on Carter Hawkins, that's on the whole front office, and then obviously once you get to the season time, it's on the players and it's on the coaching staff um, to get there. But I, I think that opening statement from Jed acknowledging that based on what they, based on their expectations and what they thought this season could be, acknowledging that it wasn't a success, um, I think it's valid. And I think that's like what it, Cody said, credit to him <laughs> for acknowledging it. Like, yeah, yeah like it, it's good to hear the front office acknowledge that this season wasn't good enough for what they wanted it to be. But again, it's on them to now go out and show that they can figure out where they need to improve, figure out where they went, where they went wrong, where things went wrong and, and make, take actions to make sure that doesn't happen again in 2024. Yeah. I mean, nobody in the press conference, I was hoping to get over there, but when I realized it was close enough, I thought to myself, well, hopefully somebody will ask, did you notice that Luke Stuckmeyer predicted 83 wins and should you maybe take him on as an advisor in the offseason? Wasn't asked, so we'll just move on with the offseason. If they call me, they call me. If they don't, they don't. I mean, uh, you were the sideline reporter there. Like, Are we sure you didn't have access to their internal numbers and you just were hiding them from us? Uh, like, no, I, I did not have access. I Jim Henry know. kept that very close to the <laughs> – real close to the – kept his cards like this. Um, I, in fact, I saw some people in the chat, not to take us off in the press conference too much, saying, what do you think of the Pete Alonzo rumors? I will tell you anything that you hear about a trade, in my opinion, between now and the end of the season, while some of that, you know, you throw enough stuff at the wall, something's going to stick. Maybe some of it eventually becomes truth. I don't think there's anybody actually talking trades right now. First of all, you're tampering if you're talking about free agents that are still playing. So. Yeah. A lot of that conversation, Jed Hoyer, you know, nobody was asking him about Otani today because he wasn't going to talk about Otani. He can talk about Cody Bellinger because that's his own free agent. But mm. um, I listen, we can talk about a Pete Alonzo later. I just don't think it's a legit thing personally today. Well, my two cents is the Pete Alonzo rumors also said, like it's from Bruce Levine, right? He said that. The Cubs, it, what he's hearing is the Cubs are going to go hard for Pete Alonso to, to pair with Cody Bellinger. Right. And two days ago, Jesse Rogers tweeted that he's hearing that the Cubs aren't going to re-sign Cody Bellinger. <laughs> so make that all make sense to me. Uh, I'm well, not mentally ready for this. I'll take it seriously in a month when the season's over. And I talk myself into thinking we're having the best offseason since, I don't know, 2015 winter. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't have any problem with it. I'm just saying I don't know that you're going to see any – traction on that for for yeah. quite some time uh so ryan those things that were said were uh, somewhat expected sometimes you know you have someone like matt eberflus who'll bury his head in the sand and and tell you things are rosy when we know they aren't at least jed hoyer's saying like we got a lot of work to do this off season the shell is there the completed project is not but the next question everybody wanted to know in the chat was and we just discussed it yesterday what about David Ross? What did he think of David Ross? We already had, as you wrote at All CHGO, we already had Tom Ricketts say, oh, we think Rossi did a good job. The players, Rossi did a good job. Now it was his real boss, Jed Hoyer. So let's, let's listen to the clip from Jed Hoyer on David Ross and what he thought. You know, clearly he's not firing David Ross because that would have been the press conference probably today. What did he have to say about his manager? Um, and I was very pleased with, with Rossi this year. Um, the things I mentioned before, you know, coming from um, you know, being 10 under and, and, and sort of maintaining not only just the competitiveness, but also having, you know, never having the team focus on individual stuff. It was always about the team. They, we never lost that. Now, creating that type of culture is incredibly difficult, and he does a fantastic job of that. You know, you, you mentioned the in-game stuff, and obviously, you know, Carter and, you know, Craig Breslow and I are down there every day. We're talking through, you know, who's available and, and what situations are going to arise. And, you know, I know the, the manager in a big market is always going to get criticism. That's part of the, the job. You know, Terry Francona just retired, and, 
he's going straight to the Hall of Fame. I was with him in Boston for a long time, and you know, there was always questions about what, what he was doing, you know, and he's you know, going to be in Cooperstown. Um, that's the nature of it. Um, I guess I'll do start. we have disagreements? Like and do we have um, you know, heated conversations? Of course we do. Everywhere but we will with Anaheim. You know, the they have to make so many different decisions. Um, they have so many things to weigh. So um, obviously we, you know, we work hard all the time to sort of give give him the right information. And if there are things that that we disagree with or things that we can do better, like he's very open minded to that. Uh, he's constantly trying to improve. Um, but ultimately, you know, we we're very pleased with the job he did this year, and. Um, you know, I think that uh, he should be proud of the, the fact that that group kept fighting for him. So you're not going to get uh, your managerial change right now, for those of you <laughs> that were looking for that in the chat or on Cubs Twitter during the season. Or if you were me. And, but, <laughs> but we, you know, we, we all said on the podcast, just nobody expected that to happen. This no, is their I guy. Realistically, even if you didn't agree with, many managerial moves throughout the season. Uh, you have to acknowledge the fact that, A, we don't know how many things were sent down from the front office. He, he talks about there's friction sometimes with any manager. So some decisions are coming from a front office. Uh, In-game stuff, this was really the first year I think you can evaluate that. Now, you may say it was all bad. That could be your opinion. I, I'm, that's okay if that's your opinion. But realistically, I just can't judge the previous years because the roster was so outrageously flawed on purpose that, I mean, what does it matter who he's bringing in when he's bringing them in if they're not real Major League Baseball players? So, to me, this is your first real report card. And then now next year, as we know he's coming back, Ryan, now next year becomes not only a critical year for the Cubs, but a critical year for David Ross to show some improvement too in places. Yeah, and I think that's something that, you know, David Ross talked about is that he he knows that there's places that he has to improve. Right? Like he's still, uh, you know, he, he he's four years into his managerial career, really had his first, you know, good team. Like he had, you know, he, he had 20, which was just a weird season in general. 21, he had like the, the remnants of the, the core, but it felt like it was on its last legs anyway that whole season. Um, and so this is like the new – core the new like uh, end of the rebuild potentially and, and this is like the first season that ross really had that roster that was trying to make that playoff push um his you know a new roster um so he's still kind of learning on job and i think that they that they knew that obviously they understood that he didn't have any managerial experience uh when they brought him in um so he's still improving and david ross talked about you know he's gonna sit down with you know probably jed and carter his coaching staff players whoever it is um, and have like honest conversations about what he can do better, right? He does that all the time anyway, from what we've uh, heard from some players and like some of his trusted players in front of office. Like he has those conversations constantly. Um, but he's going to obviously sit down with people um, in the organization that you know may be able to see his flaws better than he can on the outside. Um, but yeah, like you're right. Like it's 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 a very critical season for him. Like I, I I think when we sit right here right now, and going back to what Jed said, it doesn't feel like um, they're just going to run it back with the same roster. It feels like they are going to make improvements to the roster, improvements to the depth um, in the organization that you know will will allow the team to last the full 162 games. Obviously, um, but then it's on Ross, right? It's on it, they they've given him more resources, more better players, you know, just better overall roster. Then you look at, okay, has this team improved? Has David Ross improved um, in in-game managing and, you know, bullpen, lineups, whatever it is that everyone um, yells about. Uh, if, if we don't see the improvement next year, then I think there's real questions on if he's the guy that should lead this team. Um, well, yeah, that's, a, that's obviously a question that'll be answered next season, but, um, yeah, it's a critical season for him. Now they've given him the vote of confidence. They've backed him. Um, how does he take that? How does he improve what he needs to do? And, uh, you know, try to get this team to their loftiest goals next season. It's, it's going to be a critical juncture for him in his managerial career um, to prove that he's the guy that can get this team where it wants to go. And I, yeah. I guess it can all be just, you know, words if you want, but <clears throat> I do appreciate that Ross 
took a lot of the blame, said put it on me first before the season ended, uh, said that on Saturday. Uh, I like that Hoyer said the same thing, and I like that a lot of the players are leaving town, heading into the offseason a little red-assed about this whole thing. They're not, they're not thrilled with the way it went down, and they shouldn't be because fans aren't happy with the way it finished. You, you had this standard, okay, we all made our predictions for what this team was going to be, but once you didn't trade guys away and you decided to go for it, then, then the, the goals were changed for the season. You rewrote the script, and from that point forward, especially the last three weeks, it was a failure. Yeah. So there's lots of uh, evaluating to be done this offseason. I kind of get the feeling there won't be a fall guy at all this offseason. I don't think they're going to do the hitting coach thing. I don't think Tommy Hadovy's going anywhere. I don't think the manager is going anywhere. Right? Tommy Hadovy should be the last guy on his way out. <laughs> I, I, I kind of believe, actually, once you've decided Ross is coming back, I would not have a problem with, with Jed Hoyer and David Ross saying, Everybody's back. We want to keep yeah. that consistent. And there wasn't anybody that we thought really needed to have a new voice. Yeah. I mean, again, it's not surprising. I think differently, but at the same time, it kind of goes back to what Ryan was saying about how this next season is a career-defining year yeah. for David Ross as a manager. Um, and, again, I, like I said yesterday, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go into it with – you know, the same type of criticism that I bit, did all season with him. Uh, but the only, the only thing that Jed said that gives me any kind of optimism about it is that he really talked about how what he means in the clubhouse to the players and all that kind of stuff and how they want to play for him and all, the, all that kind of stuff. Right. And what, again, you can't measure that. You can't. You, hell, he could just be bullshitting us. I, I don't know. But that was the only thing that just left me, you know, I guess feeling okay. But, yeah, he's got a lot of things to do to become a better manager. He's got to learn to adjust faster, in my opinion. He's got he's to he's gotta learn to not rely so heavily on veterans all the time. Uh, so, yeah. And give certain certain guys a day off every now and then. Didn't we kind of know that already, though, going into the season? I feel like we already knew that David Ross, having taken the path that he had, Ryan, to, to the major leagues, not being a superstar player, a guy that, you know, had to fight to be the backup catcher on a lot of teams and pushed around a little bit, had many failures, that he would be able to relate to a lot of players. He could say this is the hard path. So I, I'm not surprised that he's well-liked. I'm not surprised that his message isn't lost. Like, do I think the Bears players are not hearing the talk from their coach anymore? Yes. I don't think that happened, and I think that shows based on the Cubs, the way they played leading up to the trade deadline. But it's the other stuff that's really going to be the key, Ryan. It's the in-game stuff and – whether or not this team makes the postseason next year. If they make the postseason, now you can say there's progress. But if they're in the same position next year, then somebody will be blamed. Yeah. Somebody will be blamed, whether it's the general manager or a coach or a manager. There will be blame to go around next year. I don't think this is the off season. Yeah, no, and I guess I'm just going to be blurry for the rest of the podcast. So if you can't see me, sorry, but you could hear me. Um, no, yeah, like, this isn't the off season. I think we have made that pretty clear that it's not. It, it, it never felt like his job security is on the line. It never felt yeah. like the collapse was going to um, cause the front office to, to, to feel like they need to make a change at the top. Um, but, yeah, like we've all said, it's, it's what, what happened this season – it wasn't good enough for them this season. It's not gonna. It's definitely not gonna be good enough a year from now. We, we can't. If we're again, if we're sitting here on October third and the Cubs are out of the playoffs, um, then I think there's gonna be real questions in that front office again, as if uh, if if David Ross is the guy. And um, yeah, so it's on. It's on him, right? It's on him to make the improvements and make all that. Um, do everything he needs to do to be a better manager than he is. And like I said, he's he's having those conversations on what he needs to do to improve and how to improve on that. 
Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's like a time will tell kind of thing. Like we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll reevaluate next year for sitting on this show and, and the Cubs are out of the playoffs already um, or never made the playoffs, I guess. Uh, we'll reevaluate, but um, yeah, I think we got a whole off season where um, David Ross needs to really reflect on what he could have done to get this team to the postseason um, and make those improvements. It, it's a pretty critical season for him, as you all said. Uh, Captain Tater Tot. <laughs> I like this in, one. Uh, yeah. In the chat, he says Terry Fa- Francona said something like, "I'd rather look like an idiot to the media and fans than to ever throw my team slash players under the bus." David Ross seemingly has the same concept, and that reminded me of something that Jed said in the presser too, related to David Ross. Right, whenever he, it was like the very first question that they asked him about David Ross, and he he said something about Terry Francona and how because they were in Boston right. together, right, and. He said that, you know, when I was in Boston, people questioned uh, Terry Francona all the time, and he's going to go to the Hall of Fame one day. So, I, again, I, I'm, I need to be proven wrong at this point. Like, I need, obviously they need to make roster decision, decisions and all that, but, you know, there are things that I've already highlighted that, I, that I, for me, I think he needs to get better at and, and do differently. And if he does that next year, then – if they don't make the playoffs, then hopefully I we can sit here and blame someone else for it because obviously if you have a better roster and you don't make the playoffs next year with the roster you already have, then like you said, Luke, I agree. Like they're, they're probably gonna there's gonna be a fall guy somewhere next year. And I have no problem with a manager or a coach that wants to take the path of I'm never going to throw a player under the bus. Now. In my eyes, some players sometimes need that motivation of this guy wasn't good enough. And, and that, as long as the conversations are being had behind closed doors, I'm okay with, you know, sugarcoating things to the fans and media if that's what it takes. Uh, we're going to talk about Cody Bellinger. We're going to hear from Jed Hoyer on that. We're going to hear about uh, Kyle Hendricks and the idea of reaching that tax luxury threshold that is the key to the offseason that's all coming in uh just a minute ryan's staying with us and uh want to tell you about some new things we have going on we got some ray chrysler dodge jeep and ram info are you in the market for a new vehicle if you are we've got great news for you ray chrysler dodge jeep and ram in fox lake has joined the chgo team and ray cdjr you're always able to shop one of chicagoland's largest inventories and find unforgettable savings And right now, during Ram Power Days, only at Ray CDJR, only in Fox Lake, you're able to secure 0% financing or 17% off new Ram models. But that's not all. Now, through Halloween, October 31st, explore their newly renovated showroom and take advantage of a limited-time seven-year anniversary savings. So, if you're in the market for a new vehicle, then you have to check out the team at Ray Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram because they are the only team we recommend. Visit them today on Route 12 in Fox Lake. For more information, visit Ray CDJR in Fox Lake or RayCDJR.com today, serving the community since 1963. 1963. Uh, so, Circus, uh, Circa, I went to Circa in Vegas. Yeah. And they just came to Illinois. Bingo. And, uh, you, I think that was within the last couple of days. So it's open. M- my life has changed immensely. Uh, they just opened their sports book in Waukegan, and they're doing some big events. I think at Old Crow and Wrigleyville tonight. Yeah. Uh, See to, how the big guy giveth and taketh away. Yeah. Taketh away the Cubs, giveth you Circa. Yeah, yeah. And one of the reasons I love Circa, outside of their beautiful, beautiful stadium swim in Vegas. Wow, I gotta see that. Is that they have. They have some of the best odds you can get in gam in, in sports betting, right? And also, they don't they don't limit people who are really good at sports betting. Like on some other books, they will not give you all the boosts or give you free bets and stuff if you do too good, right? They treat everyone the same. Uh, you know, they also have great customer service. They're real people behind the Circus Sports brand who resolve issues in a timeline fashion. Uh, unlike other books who use chat box, chat bots. Uh, and uh, I've checked out the app. It's real smooth. 
and easy to, to navigate, which... I'm downloading stuck, right after this show. Stuck, I know how yeah. you are with technology. That's right. That I feel like you're going to do really well with Circus Sportsbook. Even for dummies like me. Even for dummies like you. They're so, the way to go. <laughs> so download the Circus Sports uh, uh, Illinois app at circusports.com slash Illinois dash app uh, to sign up today. Also, be on the lookout for Circa events, watch parties, and tailgates. They were at the, tail- the Bears tailgate for us yeah. this past weekend, by the way. So Well, they were at the first one, too. Oh, Remember yeah, they we were, were at the first one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we were talking to them. Uh, if you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-GAMBLER, text <coughs> G-A-M-B to 833-234, or visit areyoureallywinning.com. We are winning circas in Illinois. Oh, yeah, Bingo. Baby. Ready Life to go. Life-changing. Where were you when Circa came to Illinois? I was right here. Right here and dealing with my pain from the Cub season, but it suddenly turned right around in some aspects. I would like to get to Stadium Swim. If they'd like to send us out, you know, midseason. Maybe, maybe they want us during spring training. Stadium Swim time. is awesome, man. We go during a little March Madness. Yeah. Me and... Uh, While Ryan's off uh, enjoying the warm weather in when Arizona, I went out maybe there, we'd go I went to the with, swim. When I went out there, I went with Nick Moriano from CHGO Bears. Yeah. And Sean Anderson from CHGO White Sox. And uh, me and Nick, we were the only ones who went to Stadium Swim. I think Sean was... He was having a little bit too much fun on the slots. Yeah, uh, but Stadium Swim's awesome. I you, picture you and Moriana walking out to the pool area by Stadium Swim, sort of like a scene from the TV show Entourage. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, a couple of guys. I don't yeah. know who's Johnny Drama, but that's another podcast. Uh, another neither comedy. one of us. I would say that Moriano was uh, like Vince. Vince, he's, he's just he's, a good looking Vince. dude. He's got the sunglasses yeah, on all yeah, the time. He's yeah, Vince and. I don't, I'm a bigger dude. You, so are I you guess e I'm or, Turtle? You're E. Well, Turtle, yeah. Turtle's trimmed down now. Has he? Oh, yeah. If you see him in real life, Turtle doesn't even look like the same guy. Oh, wow. Anyways. Um, <laughs> and that was big of me to say because. That's right. You know, Credit to you. He's the one everyone makes fun of the most. Johnny Drama is the one everybody makes fun you of. You think so? Yeah. I thought everyone made fun of Turtle. Well, I think they, they, they called him Turtle. Uh, <laughs> Jed Hoyer with his press conference at Wrigley Field today uh, talking about the season and now looking ahead to what he's going to do in the offseason. And that's where a lot of the big questions come. Okay. You didn't make the playoffs. It's over. We've put it in the past. Cody's going to mourn for a week, and then he's going to move on. Yep. Some of you will mourn longer than that and then move on. But the focus now is what's going to happen in 2024. What are you going to do this winter? Baseball winter meetings. What are you going to do at the GM meetings? What deals are you going to get done? What free agents are you going to sign? Well, the first one that we hear about is, to me, what I've been saying the last month is the most important. Cody Bellinger is a free agent. They signed him to a one-year deal. He took the one-year deal because he wanted to play at Wrigley Field. His former hitting coach was here, right? Thought he could resurrect his career. Took a one-year deal and bet on himself. Credit to him. Credit to him. Good for him. He proved that he is a legit star. You know, he's a former MVP who a year ago, Ryan, if I'm not mistaken, was the worst hitter in baseball, right? He he was... One of. He, he went from like, he was, he was the Lucas Giolito of hitters. He went from best, worst to best, to best, you know, only the other way around. Now he's back to being legit. To me, they can't let him slip away. I don't know what that's going to cost, but here's what Jed Hoyer had to say about free agent Cody Bellinger, somebody that he can comment about because it's his own team. So, Luke, we, um, yeah, the Belly one and the Hendrix videos are still being loaded up right now. Oh, we we're have, still waiting on um, We have the weighing on the luxury tax, though, is ready to go. So you want to do the luxury tax first? Yeah. All right, let's, let's mix it up then. We're waiting on the Bellinger. He's going to be part of it. If they're going to get him, they're going to have to spend big money. He's not signing another one-year deal. And I've said, you know, even Bellinger wouldn't be enough for that offense for me. Right? You need more. So, Bellinger and Shohei. All right, shove it in. <laughs> Reach the lux- luxury tax. I see the Godfather laughing at that. This is what Jed Hoyer had to say about the possibility of the Cubs dipping into that luxury tax threshold. I don't weigh it alone, um, is the answer. I think that'll be a lot, a lot of conversations with, with Tom and the family, you know, you know with Crane and, and the business side. Um, there's been a willingness to go over in the past. You know, we, we were over, um, I don't remember exactly all the years we were over, but a number of times, um, 
as the previous core got more expensive and as we needed to supplement the roster, we, we did go over. So philosophically, we've shown a willingness to do it. And you know, I think it's a, you know, both, a, both a budgetary question, but it's also just, you know, we want to make sure that um, strategically, you do, strategically you do it at the right time. And so we'll have those discussions. But like I said, there's no, there's no organizational um, mandate against it as has been shown in the past. So there it is. They will spend. But, guys, the thing that stood out to me in that soundbite was trying to decide when to do it. Do it at the right time. So is this offseason, will he be able to convince Tom Ricketts this is the right time because you have a player like Cody Bellinger, you have a player, a generational player like Shohei Otani on the market. Is this the right time to dip into that? big money pool they spent a lot of money in the offseason last year but now is this the right time ryan from what you heard today do you think the cubs will spend as much this offseason as they did last offseason less than off last offseason or more than they did last offseason i don't know specifically I mean, what did they put? Like it was like three hundred million or they something. They were up like that, there. Right? They were one of the top yeah. teams. Yeah, but like guaranteed money. Um, I don't. I don't know. I don't know in comparison, but I know like so when they talk about the luxury tax um, and and the right time to do it, right? I, I, like we all talked about it, and it's really in line with what we've kind of said all. You know, going back to last season, like this wasn't the season to start that luxury tax clock, right? Like like it wasn't the season to to go over it. Um, and, and the name of just like trying to sneak into the playoffs or anything like that. It was like they got they, they tried to keep room. They didn't keep enough room to be able to add at the trade deadline. Um, but they didn't go over the luxury tax. And so they're, they're, they're reset right now. Right. Like they're not um, they're not they haven't started that clock yet. So when you talk about the right time, it, it really fits in with all that. They, they spent a lot of money last off season, um, but managed to stay under that line. And so now going to this season, again, I don't know if they're going to spend more than 300 million or not, but I I think that I think of it more as like they're willing to make the additions. um, It feels like to really compete and and reach their goals next season. Um, And if that means going over the luxury tax threshold, I don't I don't think that's like a, a roadblock in the way of doing that. I think that they're that. They've, they've, you know, they spent a lot of money on Dansby, obviously, last offseason. Um, Say uh, and Marcus Stroman, if he uh, ends up opting back in for next season, right? So they, they spent money on some good players the last um, two off seasons, but they didn't go over that luxury tax line this year for a reason. And so now, again, I think by resetting that clock, um, that's not going to hinder them when they go into the off season and and really consider what they need to do to add to this roster to improve it. Um, so, yeah, so it's not about, for me at least, the, the total of them of what they're going to spend. It's about, like, I feel that they're not worried about staying under the luxury tax this season. I think that they're willing to go over it to get the right players, even if that's a big spending player. Right? Like you mentioned Shohei Otani. If that's the guy, um, they're not going to be worried about the luxury tax this offseason. I think that's – I think – we have like without saying it right like neither jed nor tom ricketts said that because that you know that the no one would should expect them to say we're going to go over the luxury tax this off season um but i think uh based on their words and based on just just some prior history i know everyone likes to say that ricketts doesn't like to spend which is just you know whatever um but i i, I think that what they've shown and what they've said i think we can Again, just expect that the luxury tax threshold isn't what's going to hold them back from spending money this offseason. I think uh, there was another soundbite that he had about the same stuff, okay? And he was, I believe it was Patrick Mooney that first posed this question and was like, is this time to be a little more aggressive and less rational? Because that is, uh, that was the game plan that Jed laid out last year. We want to be rational about this. We want to get the right player at the right price, but we don't want to have, you know, he didn't say this in this many words, we don't want a Hayward contract that's going to hamstring us for moves going forward. 
Now, keep in mind, Shohei Otani would cost more than their entire last offseason. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Shohei, would, Shohei would push all of that aside and be like, you want to spend money? And we've heard reports. We've heard uh, Jeff Passan say he thinks they're going to be in on him. Whether or not they get him, that, that's another thing. But one of the things Jed was talking about was he said, we pushed the envelope last year, talking about the Bellinger deal. And he paused, he got a little uncomfortable, and then he smiled and he laughed. And you could tell it wasn't, he didn't look nervous, but you can tell it was a slightly uncomfortable question to be asked and have to answer for him. I thought he did a good job of it, but it was, diff, it was a different answer than any other question that he had in the entire press conference. Will you be less rational, a little more aggressive? And he said, we pushed the envelope last year. Uh, I would like to continue that momentum. Ha, 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 ha. It's not all my decision, but that's all I'll say about that. So he turned it into a little bit of a joke. That question sums up the entire offseason to me. If you're talking about big money spending, he's got to go and have those conversations with the Ricketts family this offseason. You don't think Jed wants to spend? I guarantee he wants to spend. He wants to see the results happen faster and the way to not give up all the prospects that you just ended up building for st- sustained success, which is what they're really looking for, is to spend a little more money sometimes. Now, I lived through a generation of Cubs baseball where just spending doesn't work. Yeah. Right? I, I, I saw that stopgap a million times not work. All right, we're going to give you Henry Rodriguez. It didn't work. Oh, we're going to give you Jock Jones. Didn't work. We're gonna give, I saw a lot of that. So it does have to be smart spending, as I talked about. But when I talk about a guy like Cody Mellinger or a guy like Shohei Otani, who's a generational player, just because the money is absurd to everyday people like us doesn't mean it's not smart spending. Some people will tell you no player's worth $400 million. Okay, but this guy's different than other players. So <clears throat> having heard those sound bites, what do you think, Cody? Are you... You think they're spending or not spending to your liking? I think I think it's fair to say that they have to prove it first. Yeah. Uh, again, this organization has never given a player over $200 million contract. But do you think they'll do – all right, just that then. Do you think they'll have a $200 million guy? Because to me, that means Bellinger or Shohei. I don't, I'll be realistic. Both of those guys aren't happening. But do you think they will give somebody $200 million? I think this is the offseason to finally do that, at the very least, to go over that number. This is the offseason to do it. And I don't know. I mean, these, these the soundbite, whatever. Like, my, my thinking on Ricketts is that they didn't sell at the deadline, and I feel like Tom wanted to win. I feel like well, yeah. I feel like Tom. I feel I feel like Tom had some some play in them also not selling at the deadline, and I I think that because of that, that gives me a little bit of confidence in thinking that they want to build off this year. If they don't spend a little bit more, or at least get a major superstar like player, whether it is via the trade or free mm-hmm. agency, then it just isn't. It is, I don't know how we can go into next season with, with, with anything other than thinking that we're running it back. So, yeah, unless they're making a major trade, like I, you know, we've seen it in the chat the last handful of days, like Juan Soto, whatever, like whoever it is. All I'm saying is, is even if you make a trade, those, I mean, Juan Soto is going to make a decent amount of money next year yeah. anyway. <laughs> so, like, you're still spending money, right? To me. This is the off season to do it to to not only go over that luxury tax but to break that 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 narrative of this 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 ownership doesn't want to spend and you know again actions speak louder than words so freaking do it already man all right so for me the, for me that guy first start with is Cody Bellinger because I think if yeah. they do Bellinger then that probably takes them out of the show hey mix but it it gives them a first baseman. Yeah. Now, we'll see about that. So, Sarah, do we have the Bellinger sound, what he had to say about Cody Bellinger? Yes, we do. All right, let's <laughs> hear that real quick. 
Yeah, we blew two teams out really well this year. Um, and we were, you know, we were, I think, 14, 14 games over 500, I think, in games decided by five or more runs. That's a really good indication of a really good team. You know, I think that um, you know, in one run games, I think we were two under. Um, you know, I think I was, I'm really proud of our hitting infrastructure and all of our hitters. You know, we ended up with over 800 runs, and we uh, were, I think that's top six, top 20% in baseball, which is certainly not where we were projected uh, going into the season. And I think Cody was a big part of that. Uh, he had incredible season, and um, it felt like during that run that we had, it just felt like it was just one, two out, single after another. You know, whenever we needed him, he sort of bailed us out. And um, that's certainly not lost on us. Um, you know, we sat down with him on Sunday, had a, a long conversation. We've had really good dialogue throughout the whole year. Um, and he loves Wrigley Field and he loves the, the fans. And I think his experience was fantastic. And obviously our experience with him was fantastic. And, um, you know, we'd love to bring him back. We'll have a lot of conversations with him. Obviously it's a process and that process does not start now. You know, it's going to obviously, it's going to, you know, play out for a while, but, um, I thought I told him this. It's rare to have a guy come in on a one-year deal and have that kind of connection with the fans. By the in the middle of the season, it was really special, and he deserves a lot of credit for how hard he plays and the way he played. I think that's what created that. Um, yes, I do think that um, you know the, the 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 contributions he made will have to be replaced. I think that's like you know um, obviously you know, like I said, we'd love to bring him back, but. Um, in a world where that's somewhat uncertain, we do have to figure out a way to, to replace that offensively. So the question is, will they be able to wait for Scott Boris and Cody Bellinger? Will they be willing to wait for Scott Boris and Cody Bellinger? If he is the guy they've identified, they said last year he was the player they, they identified as, that's their number one goal was to get Bellinger on that deal last year, and they got him. Ryan, do you think they'll wait for Bellinger and Boris this time around, or will they have to make moves before uh, he d- makes up his mind? I mean, that's a that's a good question, right? Like, I, I don't know. Like, I, how yeah. patient are they willing to be? Because it's like Cody Bellinger is obviously going to be one of the top free agents on the market, right? Like, we know that. Um, and like with Shohei Otani's like uh, his injury, obviously he's not pitching next year, like that puts a wrinkle into the free agency market, right? He's still a jump, like an all time hitter. Uh, but that doesn't, that's going to put a wrinkle into the, uh, just the free agent market. So I, I yeah, I don't know. I, it, it depends on if they're willing to potentially obviously lose out on some other guys they could bring in. Right. Like, is there someone else out there that they, that, that, that would maybe not be this consolation prize, but it's like, on the, the the pecking order of like Cody Bellinger and then this guy's right below him. Like, are they willing to potentially lose out on that guy because uh, Scott Boris is kind of um, kind of biding his time and, and waiting? So I, I, I don't know. That's a tough question to answer. Um, it's kind of un- unanswerable until it actually happens. But yeah, I don't know if they, I mean, if they really, really want Cody Bellinger, if he's their number one target, um, I think they could wait for it. If that's, if they, if they have focused on, we are like our number one priority is to re-sign Cody Bellinger, then potentially, but you're, yeah, then you're also like thinking about like how long are they going to have to wait to get for those negotiations? Like how long is Scott Boris going to wait out like every other team to see if he could get a better price or a better contract um, for his client? How, how, how long are the Cubs willing to wait on that? I don't know. Um, but they, yeah, again, if, if Cody Bellinger is the number one priority, they might have to. All right, we're up against it time-wise today. Uh, we're still going to get to Kyle Hendricks uh, and what their plan is for him in the offseason. But first, I want to tell you about Fubo TV, 140-plus live channels of sports shows, movies, and news. Stream live TV from any device. Watch the most Chicago sports for the lowest price, and you can start watching right away with their free trial. No contract, no cable, no hassle. Just sign up and start watching. They also give you 1,000 hours of cloud DVR included at no extra charge. You can watch the Big Ten football. You can watch the NFL. You can watch the Bears, dare I say, NFL Network, Red Zone. Um, you can watch everything. Watch it at Cubs, obviously, on marquee when they're back. Watch all your favorite college football and NFL with Fubo TV. Go to www.fubotv.com slash CHGO to sign up for 15% off the first month of Fubo. Foco is a company we teamed up with. They've been a partner of ours for over a year now, and wow, we just love them. Check out our set decorations. 
That, of course, is the trophy from our softball championship last night. That's not from FOCO, but everything else is. Yeah. Because FOCO fits you out with the best sports gear around. Hoodies, shoes, signs, bobbleheads, and everything in between. Time to upgrade your wardrobe this winter. Maybe you want an Aloha shirt for that winter vacation. Straw hats, polos, bags, everything you need for a game. These set decorations are spectacular, and we thank them for those. Check out FOCO.com or click the link in the description below. For all non-presale items, use the promo code CHGO for 10% off. All right, so Jed Hoyer spoke. He also talked about Kyle Hendricks. Now the last piece of the puzzle left from the 2016 champions, and the question is, will Kyle Hendricks be back next year? Team option, which would take him from $14 million this year to $16 million next year will the cubs pick it up here's jed hoyer on that i thought his season was exceptional given either truly i didn't have a great sense of what we were going to get out of him you know um you know he was confident going into spring training and throughout the winter that he was going to get back and and, and be a, you know, old kyle hendricks um and he did. I was really impressed to, impressed to watch. He worked on his velocity a lot, his arm strength, and I thought, you know, even touching some 90s in his, in his last outing, um, he really had a, a, an exceptional year given what, what we were expecting. And, um, you know, certainly, um, you know, he's been one of my favorite uh, Cubs players to be around since we got here. Um, hard to imagine a better teammate, uh, someone, I um, mean, like, redefines low maintenance you know he's just um does whatever the team needs and i just enjoy to have him around so um obviously we'll um not gonna negotiate anything um with you guys right now but certainly um we want to you know keep him in, in, as a cub for you know next year and beyond interesting next year and years after that what did, what did you make of those comments what did, did you should we read in between the lines on that I mean, I am, uh, I'm not really sure what to expect at this point. I think if they can find a way, like, first off, if Stroman decides to opt out, which I don't think he will, but if he, but if he does, then I think it's okay. Or then I think it's, it's smart. Deal, yeah. Then I think it's smart and a done deal that Hendricks will be back. But again, I don't think that's going to happen. I think he's going to opt in. But if he opts in and then maybe the Cubs trade him, as in Marcus Stroman, maybe that's how they keep him. I just don't see the Cubs going into next year with Stroman and Hendricks on the roster together. Both of them. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't see it. If, if they do, then, then I feel like we're going to be very disappointed about the offseason and feel like we're basically running it back. So... And, and this isn't against Kyle, like this isn't slander to Kyle Hendricks or no. Marcus Stroman. It's just I keep going back to the fact that this team just doesn't have a lot of swing and miss. Variety. Yeah, like Stroman at this point in his career is probably a better version or similar type version to Kyle Hendricks. Like he, he relies on getting soft contact, ground ball pitcher type thing. And Kyle Hendricks, like, is, that's all he does. That's his entire career. He'll have a game every now and then. Will he'll rack up a handful of strikeouts? I think Stroman's, you know, probably better at that than than Hendricks at this point. But I just don't see how this team's going to go into next year with both those guys on the roster and expect us to believe that they're going to be a real playoff contender. Ryan, did you read anything into that? What What did it sound like to you? I well, yeah, it, it sounded like they expect. Kyle Hendricks to be back like they expect to pick up that option and um I mean, part of it I mean, he, yeah Jed's not gonna confirm or deny that right like he, they, they love Kyle there they think he's hey I'm not blurry anymore that's kind of nice um they love having Kyle there they love having him obviously his World Series experience and, and just one of the all-time great Cubs pitchers but like he's approachable to the young guys the young arms and that are coming up guys that are being added he's approachable he's willing to give advice he's willing to take advice he's willing to just work with everyone around him um anyone that's talked to kyle like understands that uh, he's a great clubhouse presence in there but he also came back and like look at some of his stats from this year like he was 
and he's he's more, he's more of a ground ball pitcher. He always has been. Um, the last couple of years have has seen a decline in that, and he got back up to forty six point three percent ground ball rate. Like that's that's more in line with some of his better seasons. He gave up, you know, the home runs had been a, a problem for him, um, and he only gave up home runs per fly ball was at eight eight point five percent rate. Right, like he was getting the soft contact, wasn't giving up a lot of home runs, keeping the ball on the ground. Like that looked a lot more like Kyle Hendricks, um, and Jed acknowledged that. They didn't know what like none of us knew what to expect out of Kyle Hendricks. He missed like eleven months, uh, but he came back. He wasn't twenty sixteen Kyle Hendricks by any means, but he was effective and he the, the the results looked more like what Kyle Hendricks' results you should expect that out of him um, at this stage of his career. And so I think when you're looking at was a sixteen and a half million dollar team option, um, where where obviously where the Cubs are but beneath the luxury tax threshold um, and where just salaries and all that different kind of stuff go i mean if you're paying kyle hendricks one year that amount to be like your four or five starter like that's a pretty solid deal uh for the cubs so to bring back um you know again a great clubhouse presence a guy that works well with everyone in that locker room and, and in the coaching staff um and can pitch a big game here and there and just give you solid starts for the most part like I, that's 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 not breaking the bank for him um and so i think when they consider that, like Kyle Hendricks, like when they look at 2024, Kyle Hendricks absolutely fits in the plans. Uh, and so I think that that's, I think that my expectation is that they would pick up that option because they were able to, like had, had he came back and struggled or had an up and down season, like you don't know, right? Or he got hurt again, like that, that that's, a, that's a very different question. Um, he put in a lot of work when he was out to maintain his body, to build up the strength, to get some of that velocity back and get back to being more like Kyle Hendricks. And so I think those, I think his season answered some of those questions for him on if they should bring him back next season. So I, I think where they're at right now, it feels to me like that's Kyle Hendricks returning to the Cubs in 2024 is the likelier um, scenario in my opinion. All right, we only got two minutes left here. Uh, Kyle Hendricks, I believe, is the last current Cubs athlete or current Chicago athlete who was on a championship Chicago team. Jamer Candelario. Jamer Candelario. Stand corrected, too. Technically a free agent now. All right, uh, <laughs> that brings me to Ryan and the, uh, the cup, KUP, Irv Cups in it. There it is. Softball cup. There it is. Ryan played last night. Cody and I inspired, oh, yeah. so we get part credit for that. CHGO won a big softball cup last night. There it is. Champions. Ryan Champions. went yeah. two for four oh, yesterday. Credit to him. Not only are we still here, we're now the champions. Yeah. Credit to champions. me for not showing up because I suck. Me too. Yeah. Could have come out to support. Let's go, baby. Well, Ryan, what did you well, – Cody and I did our part <laughs> by inspiring. Yeah. Ryan, how did it feel to be inspired by two greats like us? Uh, no, I think my inspiration came from Mark Carmen, uh, our, oh, you know, our manager, Carm right? Oh, gets the love. Uh, we were talking about it in the office, and, and Adam Hogue, the other, one of the Bears guys, was talking about, like, we better not lose. And I'm like, if we collapse, it's on the manager. It's not our fault. It's the manager's oh, fault. Oh, wow. They were, ready to, uh, they were ready to take the fall. Yeah. Uh, funny, Carm, how, funny how you became the fall guy. <laughs> Carm, Carm, no, Carm got us. He rallied the troops. Um, you know, we, there's a couple beat games. Beat the score. Beat the score in Odyssey. Yeah. Mm. Both, wow. we, had, we had semis and championships yesterday. You know, we went down 5 nothing in the semis in the first inning, had some bad errors, whatever. We got together, slaughtered them, got, you know, Odyssey, a.k.a. the score in the championship game. And it was, you know, we had another one more bad inning where we made some defensive miscues. They were able to tie up the game. But from there, it was on cruise control, it felt like. We, we, got, we got the hits. We played the right, the great defense. I'm, I'm going to clip there's a video of me catching a screaming line drive back at the second baseman, and I looked. It was it was great. It was probably the best player of the year for me. Um, so, but I, but I can't take all the credit, man. Like it's, it's all about the team, right? Team first. We won the title, and I'm just happy I can contribute to a title. Bragg's in the stands with uh, wants to know if we've signed Otani yet. Greg Bragg's two dollars super chat. He's Three bucks would have been nice, Greg, but two is the, okay, all right. The CHGO uh, softball team has not signed Shohei Otani yet. No, we haven't. Uh, and I suggest that next year, instead of the beer bat, Cody chugs from the cup. <laughs> the cup runneth over. I actually this kinda, is what we chug from next year. I Champions like, chug from the cup. I actually kind of <laughs> like that idea. No, Mike he didn't. Know, he, know. 
He didn't earn it. He didn't earn it. That again, no, together. you never I, want to put your I lips helped. on the Stanley I Cup and this up. one's probably Imagine the same. if I showed up. I would have helped us lose at least a few games. You could have showed up and cheered. Law showed hey. up. No, cheered no, if I'm showing up, I'm playing. Gun. You know who shows up? I didn't show up. You know who shows up all the time? Shady Rays. Take on the sun with gear built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered for the warm weather ahead. Premium polarized shades at an affordable price. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that offers a world-class product that's just as good as any expensive pair we've ever worn. Durable frames. Extremely clear optics for outdoor adventures. And that's not all. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection of all of eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses backed by lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your pair, even on day one, they told us, They'll send you a brand new pair, no questions asked. Wear your Shady Rays with confidence because they have your back long after you buy them. Together with their customers, Shady Rays is providing much-needed support to nonprofit partners across the U.S. through Shady Rays Impact. From building play sets for pediatric cancer patients to providing young adults with MS, the outdoor adventure of a lifetime, Shady Rays is making an impact in your community and others like it now for years to come. If you don't love your Shady Rays, Exchange them for a new pair or return them for free within 30 days. No risk when you shop. Their team has your back. And exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com and use the code CHGO for 50% off two-plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by more than 250,000 people. And when you have your Shady Rays on, just go ahead, crack open a nice Goose Island uh, doesn't matter which one, any of them go well with your Shady Rays. Goose Island is the official beer of CHGO, Chicago's beer since 1988. It is fall, so Oktoberfest is here. Got the Beer Hug family, the 312 Weedale, and of course the Full Pocket Pilsner. Uh, tailgates, we have all kinds of Goose Island that uh, we got. I don't, when's the next one? I don't know. It's coming up. That's all I know. I don't I'll see know what the next tailgate is. The next tailgate? Yeah, the I next can one? pull that up right uh, now. Vikings game. There we Vikings go. October Vikings. 15th. Against yeah. the Vikes. Somebody got to win. Right. That's what we'll they say. Somebody got to win. we out at the tailgate October 15th before we're all hurt again. Look and at enjoy this. some nice uh, Goose Island with Look us. Look at this headshot Carmen's got on uh, YouTube. Mark yeah, I Carmen. Well, I thought that was Sebastian Maniscalco for a second. Yeah, it's know, very professional. Right? $2.33 for some reason. <laughs> Ryan was Jordan. Oh, because Ryan was Jordan-esque. Jordan esque. All right. He took that personal. Person. I, I will not I will not drink out of or I won't chug the out of the cup since All I right. did not play. Big of me just big to of you. just uh credit you know, to let, Ryan let and all the go. softball guys. Credit to them. I will say guys and girls. it was very big of all of us to last more than six months when I was told we wouldn't. Grab ultra fresh brewery exclusive beers at Goose Island Original Brew House on Clybourne Avenue in Lincoln Park or from their tap room on Fulton Street in Westtown. Goose Island Beer Company, Chicago's beer. All right, we are out of time. Thanks to Ryan for getting all the great sound. We're going to go through more of this uh, tomorrow, 120, live right here on the CHGO Cubs podcast. Thanks for checking us out today. And for always listening to the CHGO Cubs podcast, make sure you subscribe. CHGO Sports YouTube page. Until tomorrow, thanks for listening and fly the W.